Hello. Standing out here in the uh, paddocks on a foggy day. Don't uh, know how well the fog may be represented by the camera, but that's uh, I think all fog there, not snow. And there's somebody pulling in, so there's gonna have a car and maybe somebody saying hi in a moment, but. Uh, you know, sitting out here, standing out here, walking out here, and I'm thinking about the fog, and uh, the fog uh, functions as a great metaphor for, you know, what happens up here, what happens in here, or maybe what happens up here in the face of what we're creating here, or activating here. It's also a pretty foggy day up there as well. So it could be easy to kind of look at the fog and uh, hope that it lifts. Uh, that meaning the fog I'm looking at and uh, the metaphorical fog in the mind. Or hoping that it resolves into some clarity. But, um, you know, clarity exists uh, in relation to the fog. <clears throat> Just noticing the snow that's in the heart shape here. Which I thought was uh, kind of cool. And uh, so it's pretty easy to... You know, meet the fog with your own dissatisfaction. So, it doesn't mean that we, from a meditation point of view, just have to, you know, wait out the fog. But it doesn't mean that we have to have an antagonistic relationship with it or a long suffering relationship. You know, clarity can exist within the fog. So I've been walking around for the last 10 minutes and uh, noticing, you know, the fog keeps shifting. So it seems maybe a little less foggy uh, now uh, than it did when I started this meditation video. But it keeps shifting throughout the day. And uh, as I was walking around, I was noticing what, you know, came to my eye discreetly with clarity in focus. Uh, as contrasted to the foggy, which sort of blurred everything, did that sort of Vaseline on the lens, the soft focus thing they used to do in the old movies. Uh, and of course, uh, we don't see anything with our eyes. You know, the eyes are you know, collection points. And what we see is happening in the mind. Our language lets us think that the eyes are doing the seeing, and it feels like it. But in fact, there's a partnership between what's taken in and how it's processed. And so for me to see something with clarity through the fog, something stands out sharply, whether it's not actually in the fog and the fog is behind it or around it, or it's close enough to me that I'm able to resolve the details despite the fog, or the density of the fog has just sort of let that one thing reveal itself. As I was walking around, I was noticing how in the face of the fog, certain things were clearly resolved like on a normal sunny day. And I was realizing that even that sharpness is something happening in my mind. Which kind of shows me that that process of clarification is something that we're naturally able to do. Perhaps even subconsciously, I'm watching a little whirlwind of fog right now. There's a little slow, a little slow spinning over there, which is, I'm guessing there's no way it comes out. <clears throat> but right over there, that little bit was uh, sort of 
spinning around. Maybe it is. As far as you can see. And so what I'm going to do is um, uh, settle into a meditation and uh, see if I can set this up so the fog and the clouds are still able to be seen by you. There's the clouds rushing by. So I'm going to set this up for meditation and uh, you know the, is, the, the mind is always relatively foggy when you begin. You know, the meditation, even somewhat successfully, seems to be um, a success in deriving clarity from fog. Uh, success in deriving purification, purification, purity from muddy. So what I'm going to do is just get into my meditative state and space and posture and structure and see if I can notice what clarity there is before I have any sort of meditative success, before I deploy my skill set, my tools for meditation. I'm going to see if I can notice what's already naturally clear. And it may be, you know, as I was doing earlier, you know, it's very, very, very foggy and there's just a, that one fence post that is just standing out cleanly and crisply for me. And maybe, you know, which is relatively inconsequential and not maybe even all that interesting. But that may be something that clicks for you. I'm just looking for a spot to lean the camera up and practice a little. Let's see if uh, this works on the uh, resting the camera on the uh, the old chicken coop here. It's uh, looking at Dolly's paddock. And I'm guessing you might be able to see some of the fog and the clouds going by there. Don't know. Maybe I'll tip it a bit more to see a little bit more of the sky. See how that works. Okay. I'm just going to settle in to a meditative structure, demeanor, state, breathing, mindset. Shift the wave pattern in the brain and rather than trying to find the clarity through my actions, I'm going to see if I can recognize any clarity that's there. So is there any purity to the mud, for example? I'm just practicing a three body posture I do to often kind of help me shift into where the meditation will begin. So for me it was interesting because I don't want to jump into the habit of just be turning into meditation. I'm trying to look for a certain thing. If I can recognize that certain thing, it's a little bit like knowing that I already have a seed to something that hasn't yet grown which is a whole different experience than buying the seed, wondering who's selling the seed, and how will I get more seeds. A whole different experience to say, oh, I have that seed. Like, purity isn't something I have to wait for or, or wonder if it really truly exists. If it really truly exists, then it's a matter of uh, increasing its availability or its density or its oftenness. <laughs> Uh, rather than this thing that comes from outside or comes through particular actions done inside. It's starting to rain now. I'm going to try one more time.
So, with any luck, you are also able to recognize something within and thereby recognize that it needn't come from without. So, thank you very much. See you Wednesday for Silent Night Meditation.